Hello everybody and welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to get a start on a project. I really don't expect to finish it uh, because I think it's going to take a little bit a little bit of time, but it is the it is a project for my turning club. We've started something new. The idea is each month we're going to pick a project and we're going to throw it out there and anyone who's interested will go home, make their version of the project bring it into the following meeting where we have a show and tell. And we may have some type of a little contest, I'm not sure yet. Uh, what, what we're doing this month is we're making a bud vase, or some people call them weed pots. And I have some a piece of cedar here, and I've already gone ahead and split it into four pieces. I ran them across the joiner and got two flat edges, and then I ran them through the planer and got them to where they're exactly the same size. They're perfectly square. They're a little over an inch. I don't have the exact measurement on it, but that's not as important as them being individually the same uh, dimensions, which they are. What I'm gonna do is, this is the outside of my blank. So I'm gonna take and rotate each one of these 180 degrees. I'm gonna get it cut probably about in half because they don't need a piece quite this long. And the nice thing is I've got another piece in case I screw the first one up. I can go to the second one to repair it, but I'm gonna, Get this cut off and I'll get these taped together as tightly as possible. But before I tape them, I'll rotate each one of these blanks 180 degrees so that the four corners that are in the center will be on the outside. We'll do a little turning on the outside. When we get it to where we want it, we'll cut the tape, flip them back over, glue them together, and we'll make an inside out turning for our bud vase. Now I'm hoping uh, what I can do is turn this down far enough to where um, maybe I can have a hole on the outside where you see through. I don't know. I haven't done an inside out turning for a long time. And uh, this is, so it's kind of like a first for me, but I've talked enough. Let me go ahead, get these rotated, get them taped together as tightly as possible. And then we're going to get them on the lathe. I feel like I'm doing a glue up here with all these clamps, <laughs> but this was the best way that I could hold this together tightly so that I could prepare it to go to the lathe. Now I want to reiterate what I've done with this blank. I had four pieces of wood that I put together. I found the sides that I wanted to represent the outside of my vase and I made sure they were all toward the outside. Once I got the pieces the way I wanted them, I rotated each piece 180 degrees. So let's say these were my blanks and these were the outside pieces. I simply rotate each one 180 degrees and what that does is that makes the inside or the outside of my blank the, is actually the inside. So whatever I do when I turn the outside, once I flip these back 180 degrees and glue them up, the turning that I did and the finishing that I did will be on the inside of my vase. And then I can glue them together nice and tight, turn the outside to whatever shape I desire, and I've got a nice looking bud vase. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a little bit of duct tape and I'm gonna go ahead and tape this end up. I'll determine how long I want this vase to be and then I'll add a little bit and I'll get it taped up at the opposite end as tightly as I can. I'll wrap it many times and use quite a bit of tape. Then I'll take it to my chop saw and I'll get both ends cut off so that they are perfectly square. At that point, we'll go to the lathe and we'll decide what we wanna do with the interior of our vase the shape that we want to give the inside of the vase. I want to get my tape flat so that I have a nice, nice tight tape joint. And I'm just going to wrap it multiple times so that I've got a good hold. When I'm done, it should not be able to move once I remove the clamps. Now what I want to do is determine how tall I want my vase to be and we'll get it taped up at the opposite end. I went online and I looked up how tall the average bud vase is and the answer I got was somewhere between seven and a half and eight inches. So what we're going to do is we'll extend our tape measure and 
I'll take it out to eight inches. That'll give us a little extra play. I've put a mark there, and now we're gonna go ahead and to the right of this, we'll get it taped up nice and tight. Looking at the overall size of this blank, I really feel that I have room for a second blank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put another uh, strip of tape here. I'll measure over eight inches, put a strip of tape down here. I can split the blank in half, square both the right and left ends up, and I've got two blanks in case anything happens to the first one. I've got my blank ready to go to the chop saw but I'm gonna to have to put this off until tomorrow because I really, the chop saw makes a heck of a mess, so I prefer to use it outside of the shop. So when I get home from work tomorrow night, um, I'll set the chop saw out on the driveway, I'll square up both ends, and I'll split this blank right down the middle, and then we'll be ready to put this on the lathe and start turning the inside of our bud base. Well, I'll tell you the truth, it's not the next day. It's about four days later, and I finally got back to this. I went ahead and cut my blank in half, and I cleaned up the ends. You can see I've also put a nice X on the end. And what I did, I used my lathe stock centering jig. And I'll include a link to that video down below. And by putting that X from corner to corner, I can take my drive center or my spur center and it will lock right into that X. I can use a live center on the other end that I can center right down the middle of the X. And I should be able to turn this between centers for the first part of this turning. I've got my blank mounted between centers and spins very nicely. Everything's nice and, and even. We're not off balance or anything. Um, what I'm going to do is start thinking about the shape of my, the inside shape of my weed pot because that's what I'm going to be turning right here. I'm going to apologize for my artistic skills, <laughs> but this is kind of the basic shape that I'm going for. So in, inside, we're going to have kind of a flute like this at the top and it's going to run down through the neck and then I want it to really sort of bowl out the bottom. Hopefully it'll bow out enough to where I can see uh, some holes in the turning when it's done. Uh, that's the reason why I'm doing the inside out turning is to try to to uh, give it that the, the effect of having the holes in the sides of the pot. So with that in mind we need to come up here and this is our outside so we're going to kind of loop in a little bit this is my center line right here. Okay, I'm just kind of sketching on here, rough hand, just to see what we can get. And then we'll sort of we'll sort of bow out a little bit like this. That's my interior dimension. Now what I've got to do is I've got to flip that. Okay, and what I mean by that is I've got to take that exact line and I've got to draw it on this side of the blank. Now the reason why I repeated the line over here is this is the inside of the vase, so I'll be taking the wood off out here. So as I take this wood off, when I flip it over, this will become the inside and give me the desired shape. This should make it much easier for us to see the interior profile of our vase. I'm going to be running my lathe at about half its maximum speed. Now this is a Harbor Freight 10 by 18 wood lathe and I'll be honest, I don't know what the minimum and maximum speeds are for this lathe. I'm sure I could look it up. Some of you out there may have this lathe and may know exactly what those speeds are. But by half speed, uh, I have five pulleys top, five pulleys bottom. I'm going to run on the center pulley top and bottom, and here's what she looks like. 
That's a comfortable speed for me with a piece of wood this large. Uh, if I'm getting a rough cut, I will go ahead and speed that up a little bit so that I can smooth the cut out. I'll be using my 3 8 inch roughing gouge. I just sharpened it, so I'm happy with the edge I've got on it. And uh, that's about it. I think we're ready to turn. At this point, I'm fairly happy with the inside of my turning. I followed fairly closely to the profile I made. The only thing I'm concerned about is the opening down here, but um, once I put this in a chuck, I can clean that up with a detail gouge and open it up a little more, you know, flute it, because that, that'll be the open end down there. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to go ahead and get this sanded as smooth as possible and get a finish on it and we'll get it uh, flipped around, glued up, and ready for the second half of the turning. I've sanded my turning down to 300 grit, and I'm really happy with how it looks, and it feels like a sheet of glass. Uh, cedar just sands so nicely. What I'm gonna do now is put some friction polish on this, and we'll get it off the lathe, we'll get it separated, flipped around, glued back together, and ready for uh, the second half of our turning. The friction polish really did a nice job and really just brought out the beauty of this cedar. I'm very happy with how, how this piece looks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a second coat on and then I'll put some wax on there just to kind of protect it. But as you look through the side of the vase and see this, it's going to look really nice with that interior finished uh, so beautifully. You'll notice that there's no friction polish here. I realized after I already did three sides that I need to be able to put glue there and I need that glue to stick to the other pieces so that I can hold this together. So once I get the friction polish and the wax on here, I'll come back and I'll sand these flat areas and rough them up, uh, get it back down to the wood so that my uh, tight bond will, will stick as best as possible. And we got all of the wax removed and I think the blank looks really nice. Um, I still need to sand these areas. You can see some of the uh, paper towels stuck there to the wax, but I figure as I sand that off, that'll all disappear, so I'm not worried about that. I'm going to go ahead and rough these areas up and get this flipped, up, flipped over and glued back up into the final blank. To get these areas cleaned up and flat again, I'm just going to use uh, an orbital sander 
and uh, I won't be able to use the camera because it's it'll be in the way but I'll move it out of the way I'm just gonna flatten this area up or smooth this area out rough it up and uh, be very careful not to get over onto the edges and it should should be really nice I've got my areas that need to be glued up sanded flat uh, I went ahead and took all the way down through the wax as well as the friction polish back down to the wood so that I'll get the best grip possible with my glue I want to start off by removing the tape from my blank and I'm just going to take my knife and cut right along one of the seams. And we should be able to peel the tape right off. Now remember, do not let go of these pieces. Keep them in their proper orientation while you do this. There we go. Now what we want to do is we want to flip our pieces each 180 degrees. So 90, 180, 90, 180. Flip this over. 90, 180, 90, 180. And with that, we're ready to glue everything up. We're going to get it. What I'm going to do first is kind of clean up any of the uh, wax that managed to uh, squeeze down between the cracks. And I'm going to get this glued up clamped and we'll let it dry and we'll come back and do our final turning. My blank is in clamps, glue is drying and this is very promising. See this gap right here? I've got those on all sides so what that means is as I true this blank up I'm going to start getting a gap here between the two pieces and the farther down I take this the larger the gap will get and that's what I want it when I put my uh, flower in from the top uh, I want the bottom the, the bulbous part at the bottom to have like little windows on each side so I think we're gonna be in good shape I think this is gonna work out the glue has finally dried on my blank and I've gone ahead and drawn a little line down here at the bottom roughly where I think the bottom of the bud vase is gonna be I've got plenty of room there's an inch and a half there so I'm gonna turn in a, a tenon on the end of this so that I can grab it in the, my jaws. I think it would be much safer to turn that way. We're going to start by doing that and then I've come over here and I've kind of drawn a rough profile. Um, I'm kind of thinking this is the this is the way I want the bottom of the, of the bud vase to be, sort of bulbous there. It'll come into the neck and then it'll open up to a flute at the top. Now this is a very rough estimation. I mean I've got to true this blank up first and I'm sure to true it up down here it's going to take it in quite a bit so this is not an exact I, a, exact representation of what I will have when I end up with a lot of it's going to kind of happen as I'm turning so we'll get it ready for the chuck we'll true it up and then we'll start shaping our bud vase I went ahead and set my calipers for the proper size tenon that I need and I'm ready to start turning down the end of my blank I've got my tenon turned down where I want it I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut the camera off get my chuck installed and uh, get this chucked up we'll come back and start turning our vase. Got my chuck installed. Everything looks great with the tenon. I've got a great fit. It's running true. What I want to do now is I'm just going to take my roughing gouge and go ahead and true this entire blank up. Then we'll come back and start shaping. Everything went really well with truing the blank up. I didn't have any major issues. I've got a little tear out in here where the holes are 
but I think that uh, as I as I turn, I'll clean that up a little bit. Or at least I'm hoping I will. Uh, I took a flashlight and shined it in the this little crevice, and I can see that this mark right here is the bottom where all four of the points meet. So I backed off to about here. I'm going to basically turn it down, kind of like kind of like this. All right. Now what I'll do is as I turn, I'll probably will bring it in a little thinner. But I'm going to start out with kind of a wide arc on the bottom uh, just, just to make sure that I stay really far away because until this hole gets a little wider, it's kind of tough to see. I've got a mark here at the top. I shine the flashlight up that way and roughly it appears like all four of the boards meet or come together for the, uh, the neck of the vase right about here. Um, I'm going to bet that it'll be a little farther down the blank. But that's okay. I'll turn this away, and uh, I'll be able to, uh, you know, to always back up and take more wood. I'd rather, I'd rather be careful on the front end. This is the top of the vase where the flute meets, and I need to mark where somewhere in here. I need to get my flashlight back out and mark where uh, the bottom of the flute, uh, because I did not do that. And what I'm going to do is I'll start by taking away a little bit of meat here, um, so that I can get the neck sort of. Uh, cleaned up and down to a, a reasonable dimension and I'll also take away a little bit of the of the wood up here uh, this is more just to get it out of the way so that I can I can think about working on the front of the vase uh, once I get once I get the outside of the flute cleaned up
I'm at the point now where I want to go ahead and part off the front part of this vase and then I want to break through uh, so that I can clean up the inside of this top flute and clean this lip up. I've got a basic shape that I like. Um, I'm just going to have to do a lot of sanding, so what I'm going to do is shut the camera off and take care of that, and I'll come back and show it to you uh, once I've got it sanded up and I'm ready to uh, part it off from the, uh, the chuck. I sanded my vase down to 400 grit, and I used a little crystal coat friction polish and then some brown hut wax just to kind of shine it up a little bit. I think it looks really nice. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is down here at the end, I'm going to start cleaning this up and uh, parting it down as far as possible so that I can finish the bottom and then I'll come back and part the last little bit off.
That's about as far down as I dare to go. Um, as I round at the bottom, I sort of indented it a little bit so that the entire bottom does not set on the surface of the table, but a ring on the outside does, and that should help it set uh, more stable. So let's go ahead now and do some sanding and clean this bottom up. A little bit of sanding and we'll polish that up. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop for this project. Here's the finished bud vase. Um, I know it's not super attractive. I really had to step outside of my comfort zone for this one and I learned quite a bit while doing it. Um, one thing I did learn is I am not set up to do things other than pins. Um, I've got some of the tools to do it but uh, they need to be sharpened differently. Uh, I need some more practice with handling the tools and working the tools. Uh, it's a whole different process than turning a pin. Um, I did enjoy doing it. I really wanted to be able to participate in my club show and tell, and I can. Uh, my vase didn't turn out quite the way I wanted. If you notice, I wanted a larger bottom and a smaller top. I've got a smaller bottom and a large flute at the top. Uh, I'm still going to take it in, and I'm still going to show it for show and tell. Uh, I'm not super happy with it, but... You know, it is what it is. Thanks a lot for following along with me tonight. I really appreciate it. Come back and see me again real soon. And I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Take care, everybody. Have a great evening.